So now let's move up to this. This was a, a classical portion, and then we will now talk about uh, what is the molecular mechanism behind uh, these things. How it is being? What is the interaction? Pistil, pollen, uh, pollen tube uh, interaction that is occurring either at the stigma surface or within the pistillar uh, transmission tissue. So we will talk about that uh, now. But before going into that, let us talk about the distribution of GSI and SSI. Where do we find this uh, uh, GSI, in which families? In most of these, uh, these families like Solanaceae, Rosaceae, Scrofulariaceae, Leguminaceae, Onagraceae, Campanulaceae, Papaveraceae, and Poaceae families, this gametophytic self incompatibility is predominantly found to occur. Whereas the SSI, uh, sporophytic cell incompatibility, self incompatibility, rather uh, is observed in Brassicaceae, Asteraceae, Convalvulaceae and Chenopodiaceae or Canopodiaceae. If you talk about uh, GSI, if the mechanism of GSI, there are two systems that has been uh, investigated. One is dependent on the, the activity of an RNAs that is called sRNAs uh, that is being produced by the pistillar tissue which inhibits the pollen tube growth by degrading the rRNA of the pollen tube. The other is uh, that has been found in papaveraceae that is calcium sequestration based uh, programmed cell death of the pollen tube. So th there are two molecular mechanisms as far as the uh, gametophytic self incompatibility is concerned. So uh, here is the molecular mechanism. There are two mechanisms as I mentioned. Uh, the first mechanism that is the uh, sRNA based mechanism works uh, uh, in three ways. There are three models that have been proposed. One of the model is called the inhibition model. The other model says there are protein degradation model and there is another which is, which is called compartmentalization model. Whereas the S protein based mechanism that is the uh, uh, I mean the calcium sequestration and PCD uh, that works in case of papaveraceae there is a single mechanism that works there. So now let's see how these things are happening. So this is inhibition model proposed by Thompson and uh, Kirch 1992. So here is a diagram of, uh, of a pollen tube and you can see outside the pollen tube there are two RNAs, S1 and S2 uh, produced from two different alleles. Uh, and if the pollen tube uh, is from S1 and S2 uh, pollen, uh, allelic composition of the pollen is that, then rejection will occur. If it is from S3, then pollen, then pollen tube formation will continue. So how this is regulated? Both the RNAs enter into the pollen tube. That is not uh, S allele dependent. And after the entry, the regulation is like this. There are two male determinants. As you can say, see here, one is uh, in, drawn in gray. Uh, that is uh, RNAs inhibitor. That is an RNAs inhibitor. The other protein, which is called S protein, uh, that is also, that is a homo tetrameric protein, that black colored rounded structure. So these two things are there. If the RNAs inhibitor binds with the S RNAs, then the sRNA will not be able to function and it will not degrade the rRNA of the pollen tube and the pollen tube germination will continue thus. So this will happen, this, there is a competitive binding over there, there is an affinity that there is another fa factor as, we, as I mentioned the tetrameric S protein, it competitively binds with the, with the um, S RNAs and it blocks the binding of the RNA inhibitor. RNAs inhibitor rather, uh, in case of uh, pollens which have similar S alleles, where incompatibility has to occur, what, there what happens, the S protein binds with the S RNAs at a site uh, so that the, the RNAs inhibitor cannot bind to the um, S RNAs. So the S RNA becomes, uh, remains active, it is not inhibited by the, uh, the inhibitor. And thus, it, it clips the rRNA, rRNAs of the, of, of the um, pollen tube, of the growing pollen tube, thereby inhibiting is its further growth. 
So this is how uh, the inhibitor model works. It, the other concept was this, that uh, in some other species, it was found that there are some uh, F-box uh, ubiquitinization and proteasomal degradation of the uh, of the of the srnas here what is being said that the, there are uh, f box uh, binding proteins which uh, which bind with the with the srnas and they tag the tag ubiquitin residues with the with the srnas if it is uh, if it is uh, the pollen is from compatible s allele if the po the pollen is compatible then what will be done is that the srna will be degraded by by ubiquitinization and proteasome proteasomal degradation by this pathway by the f box mediated ubiquitinization and followed by proteasomal degradation but where the the uh, I mean, the pollen is, if similar, identical, as far as the S allele is concerned, this degradation will not occur, and there will be, thus the, uh, the RNAs will be able to degrade the rRNA. There is another concept related with this that how this, uh, uh, I mean, the, how the F box identifies that this is different uh, sRNA and this is where I have to bind. So this distinction is uh, mediated by yet another protein which binds with uh, probably that is the inhibitor protein or similar kind of S protein that was mentioned earlier. That protein associates with the sRNAs. So sRNA is, is uh, it is associated with another protein. If that protein remains bound to the sRNA, there will be no uh, it, the sRNAs will be active and it will be able to degrade uh, the rRNA. This will occur in case of uh, incompatible pollen. But in case of compatible pollen, the F box will degrade that particular protein, not the sRNAs. That protein, protein which has which has bound with the sRNAs, and if that is degraded, that is removed, the sRNA RNAs will become inactive. So in this way, the control takes place. So there are various mechanisms uh, explained. In another case here, there is compartmentalization process. It has been found in pyrus. Uh, it has been found in um, Malus sylvestris or Malus uh, other species of uh, apple. Um, that the there are two things: the compatible and incompatible. Uh, in case of compatible pollen tubes, what happens uh, in both the cases? First, uh, that the uh, the sRNAs that enters into the it is uh, in fact uh, endocytosed into the pollen tube, and then uh, with the help of the Golgi vesicles, it is transported to the vacuoles of the pollen tube, where that is stored over there. And there is an another protein which is called H. HTB protein, which uh, which can degrade the by a mechanism, it can degrade the uh, vacuolar wall, and by that mechanism, uh, if the the RNAs are the released from the vehicles to the cytoplasm, degrading the rRNA. What happens? Uh, if the pollen is compatible, then they will not be removed. The vacuolar tonoplast will not be degraded by the uh, HTB uh, degradation machinery. How that will occur? Because uh, uh, some when the when the uh, I mean the sRNA is endocytose, some of the sRNA they, they remain in the cytosol. And those site, those SRN, those SRNAs are, in fact, they are degraded by proteasomal mechanism because if they are present there, they will degrade the rRNA because they are active and rRNAs are present in the cytosol, so they will degrade that. So they they have to be inhibited first by proteasomal mechanism. So this proteasomal mechanism also works here, along with that, this compartmentalization of the endocytosed uh, RNA takes place. Uh, and along with the, this HTB uh, machinery, both of them get, uh, uh, I mean, uh, compartmentalized in the vacuolar sap. In case of uh, 
compatible pollen, so pollen growth takes place. There is no uh, sRNAs in the cytosol to degrade the rRNA. Whereas in case of uh, incompatible pollen, what happens? The endocytosed, uh, I mean the endocytosed uh, sRNAs and the STB protein, they move into the vacuole. They remain, remain deposited over there, but uh, on the other hand, the cytosolic sRNAs, some of them, if it is not similar, it will it will inhibit, it blocks the HTB uh, protein degradation, uh, sorry, degradation machinery. By blocking it, it causes the, uh, I mean, the breakage of the vacuolar membrane, thereby release of the uh, uh, sRNAs into the cytosol and degradation of the rRNAs. So, therefore, there is no pollen growth further. So, this is how compartmentalization theory works in case of these, these species. Now, talking about the papaveracy family, the process that occurs in papaveracy, that is the calcium-dependent uh, programmed cell death, it occurs in this manner. Uh, the process is very, very fast. Uh, it has been seen as soon as the pollen falls, if the pollen is of similar allylic composition, uh, the reaction will be very fast that the pollen tube will be, uh, will undergo uh, programmed cell death or apoptosis, whatever you say. What happens, the, the pollen releases, uh, in fact, the pistil first releases a protein called S protein. This is allele specific S protein. So these S proteins are bound with the receptor, uh, the male determinant receptor that is present on the on the pollen tube, probably because of the uh, of a ligand gated mediated uh, ligand gated channels as they work, the receptor it opens the uh, gate for the calcium ions to enter into the cytosol of the pollen tube. So calcium sequestration occurs. It has been found that the calcium sequestration occurs within one to two minutes of uh, binding of the pollen with the with the stigma. So immediately this reaction takes place uh, which leads to the uh, either on one hand it leads to the actin filament depolymerization because the changes in the side in the overall structure of the pollen uh, tube is taking place so actin filaments are very crucial if they are I mean depolymerized then further growth with the pollen tube will be inhibited on the other hand uh, there are some other uh, pyrophosphorylases which are uh, activated and like this um, the, the, there is a activation of p68 at the more or less about four minutes minutes after the uh, pollination uh, process. This P63, P68 phosphorylation, it leads to the uh, activation of P52 MAP kinase pathway. And that MAP kinase pathway continues till uh, about 30 minutes after the pollination. So the process is quite fast and then after this uh, MAP kinase uh, pathway is triggered, it probably triggers on one hand uh, the um, caspase, pro-caspase, caspase uh, sequence of uh, reactions leading to the, finally leading to the degradation of DNA, that means programmed cell death or apoptosis, all those phenomena, ladder like, uh, I mean degradation of DNA in apoptosis occurs in such a manner that you run a gel you will see ladder formation that is an indication and blabbing of the cell takes place because here it is a plant cell so something else different characteristic will be seen in animals apoptosis shows this kind of features Now talking about the molecular mechanism in uh, sporophytic self incompatibility, most of the studies in SSI is based on the studies in Brassicaceae and Estoraceae and uh, this is a receptor mediated, receptor mediated, receptor kinase mediated pollen hydration inhibition process where the, there is a receptor kinase that is called SRK which is being, uh, which is the female, I mean the pistil determinant factor released by the S allele of the pistil, this SRK are a little specific of course so SRK you can remember this by the, by the name of Sarukh Khan so this SRK is 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 being formed is it's a transmembrane protein so there there is a i mean single pass mem transmembrane domain there is an extracellular domain there is an intracellular domain and uh, it works uh, in in dimeric condition so the other hand on the other hand the pollen the male determinant when the pollen uh, is 
is of similar identical S allyl composition, it will produce a male determinant that is called SCR. SCR means so this is a S locus cysteine rich protein, SCR. There are cysteines, there are eight residues of cysteine in the protein, that's why the name is like this. This SCR is, is specific, it is also SLL specific. If it is same with the SRK, what will happen? Inhibition will take place. So the sequence of event is like this, that when the, the S, SCR binds with the SRK, the SRK autophosphorylates itself. And the downstream uh, carrier molecules, downstream proteins that are present, one of them is ARC1. When ARC1 gets phosphorylated, it, it, uh, uh, it's a, ARC1 in itself is a kind of a E3 ubiquitinase. So it, what it does, it ubiquitinates one protein called exo a1. Exo70A1 is responsible for exocytotic uh, delivery or release of some compatibility factors that lead to the hydration of the pollen. So its degradation ultimately blocks the, the release of those compatibility factors, finally leading to the, um, uh, the hydration process, inhibition of the hydration process of the pollen. So thus, finally the pollen, uh, if it is unhydrated, it will not be able to form, uh, the, the first step is hydration. That is being blocked uh, by this mechanism. So this is beautiful mechanism. Another protein called S SLG S locus glycoprotein uh, that has also been found to be uh, produced by the pistillate, the female uh, flower, female plant. Uh, the role of that SLG is uh, not clear, but probably that binds with the SRK and it enhances the binding of uh, SCR with SRK somehow. Uh, the research is going on. So we will learn later on that what ultimately is the concept of uh, gametophytic and cell, uh, sporophytic self incompatibility, which concept is actually correct. Uh, of course, it seems that in gametophytic self incompatibility, there are a lot of different mechanism, uh, particularly the SRNAs mechanism is the most pre predominant one uh, in the system, but uh, the blockage of SRNAs, how it is inhibited or how it is, uh, it remains active, uh, that mechanism is uh, really variable. Hope I, I was able to make you understand up to some extent. Uh, if you are uh, still uh, confused a little bit, you can go through some references which I had con uh, consulted. Uh, you can also consult, the, consult these references. Uh, two books, I consulted Plant Embryology by H.P. Sharma and Pollen Biology and Biotechnology by K.R. Shivanna for basic, uh, I mean the basic part. The later part, the molecular mechanism part, I consulted several papers like this. Um, you can definitely go and search these papers. They're very, very interesting and uh, emphasizing. Thank you so much.